So here is a uh, basic uh, top view of a patch antenna. Um, so assume uh, this is a microstrip transmission line that connects to it, which is 50 ohms or whatever you want to be. You can change the characteristic impedance of transmission line Z0 by increasing uh, W. The wider it is, the lower the characteristic impedance. And then here's our patch antenna. So assume the length is given by L. Uh, this width is W. Um, we'll assume that it sits on top of a dielectric uh, with dielectric constant epsilon r, and the height is H. And the whole thing sits on top of a ground plane, and the ground plane needs to be at least as large as the patch, and typically uh, a little bit beyond that as well. And we'll kind of see why. So here is a patch antenna, and why does it radiate? So. Looking at, again, the side view, uh, let's assume that the length is given by half a wavelength in this dielectric medium here. And that's the same as the wavelength in free space, except it's divided by uh, the square root of the dielectric constant, which just comes from the propagation speed in a dielectric. So here we have a transmission line connected to this patch antenna. And so we have energy flowing down the transmission line. So what happens to the current and voltage distributions? So we know that the patch here, it's terminated in open circuit, so the current has nowhere to go. So it must, if we look at a plot of the current, half wavelength, uh, it'll be a peak in the center, and it'll be zero here because the current has nowhere to go, and then a half wavelength away, it'll also be zero. So now, what is the voltage distribution, you know, the voltage from here to here, uh, that corresponds to this current? Well, it turns out it has to be 90 degrees out of phase, which means the voltage will be a peak at the end, the voltage will be zero right at the center, and the voltage will be at a minimum at the start of the patch. So it's actually key to the radiation of the patch antennas to understand this voltage and current being 90 degrees out of phase. And the way to understand that is just you can think of the patch as an open circuited transmission line. And in that case, the reflection coefficient gamma is equal to one, whenever, or the magnitude. And so whenever you have the magnitude of the reflection coefficient equal to one, your current and voltage are gonna be 90 degrees out of phase. So the current, Terminating in a short circuit forces the current distribution to look like this. The open circuit forces the voltage and the current to come out of phase. So, if we look at, here we know the voltage is at a peak. So I'll put plus here, it's nothing here, and then negative out here. So if we look at uh, the fields here, you know, they're kind of underneath the patch, they'll go this way. They get stronger towards the end. And then we get these fringing fields out here that go like this. Now, these fringing fields have a component that is horizontal here. And these components are going in the same direction. So it's actually these fringing fields, the horizontal components of the fringing fields, adding up in phase, which is giving rise to the radiation. So you, it's not this current here. You can't think of this antenna as a current radiator. Because if you have current positive here, you're also, because this is kind of an extension of the transmission line, you have to have the negative current going this way, which means the current is not responsible for radiation. And these dominant voltage fields below cannot be either. Uh, one, they're shielded by the patch. And two, you know, for each one that goes up, there's one on the other side that goes down. But these fringing fields in the horizontal direction do not cancel, and these are the ones that are giving rise to their radiation. Let's start by talking about patch. This is the first fundamental simple thing. It's like, suppose you have a patch and its length is 10 centimeters. Suppose the dielectric constant is 4. What is the lowest radiating frequency uh, for this patch? And so actually, you should stop and figure this out. Because it, it seems simple, but... I cannot tell you how many people I've had an interview question with, and they cannot answer this question. So, I'm assuming you stopped it, because you should have. Because I'm going to give you the answer now. So, the resonant frequency, again, C over lambda, okay? So we know 
from the previous equation, it radiates at a half wavelength. So lambda equals 2L. So you substitute that and you get C over 2L resonant, which is free space speed divided by 2, divided by the square root of epsilon r, divided by 0.1, because we said it was 10 centimeters. So if you're walking down the street and you see a patch antenna that's 10 centimeters long, it'll radiate at 750 megahertz, given the epsilon r equals 4. Now it'll also radiate at three times that, as long as you can get the voltage and current distributions uh, such that it's a minimum here and a maximum here for voltage, you'll get the same radiation because you get the same fringing fields. So you can figure out what multiples of uh, F that this will radiate at as well. Okay, so what happens to the impedance of the patch? So remember, the impedance, Z, is just the ratio of the voltage to the current at the place where you feed the antenna. Now remember, we have an antenna that radiates here, but we also have to get power to it. So here we have the transmission line feeding our patch antenna. But it's feeding it when the voltage is at a maximum. So remember, here's like voltage zero. And the current is at a minimum. So we have a big voltage and zero current. So what happens? Well, your impedance when you feed it this way is very high. Uh, theoretically, we have an infinite value. But if you actually build a square patch antenna, you're going to end up with an impedance of about 400 ohms. For W equals L, which, you know, if you have a 50 ohm transmission line, you're going to have a lot of reflection. So if you look at this, if the impedance is V over I, what if we fed it in the center? Well, here the voltage, remember, is zero in the center, and the current is a peak, which means we have a small number divided by a peak, so you're going to have zero ohms. So we have zero ohm impedance if we feed it here, infinite if we uh, feed it out here. So if we want to get 50 ohms, we just need to move uh, the feed point somewhere inside uh, the edge of the patch. So here's one way of doing that. Uh, just inset the feed so you move the feed point in. Another way uh, is if you feed with a coaxial cable, you can come right up the bottom and ground the outer connector to the ground plane and move the center connector up and connect it where you want. Um, so. What about the directivity? So the directivity for a patch antenna is about 5 to 7 dB. And equations, complicated equations, you can find those in the literature, and they're not helpful at all. So it's better to understand intuitively what's going on. So remember, this is on a large ground plane, so it's not infinite. So if you had a perfect infinitely ground plane, no radiation would go in the downward directions, which would increase your directivity by 3 dB. So we can think of the radiation as also, you know, coming from a bunch of short dipoles. Recall the radiation is here. So we can think of each one of these as a short dipole. And the short dipole has a radiation of one and a half dB. But we also have a bunch of them, which makes an array. So in total, adding the effect of the ground plane, a short dipole that's the fringing field's radiation, and the array factor, we end up with 5 to 7 dB. So here's an intuitive idea of where the directivity of the patch comes from. So the bandwidth of a patch is pretty small. So typically for a square wavelength patch you get 3%, which means if your resonant frequency is 1 gigahertz, you're basically going to have this type of bandwidth for your frequency, 30 megahertz bandwidth. So in general, for all antennas, more volume equals more bandwidth. So ways to increase your bandwidth would be increase your height, H, and also increase W. Increasing W, uh, the width, also decreases the impedance of the patch. So instead of moving the feed in, you could also increase W high enough such that the impedance uh, decreases. However, you end up with a really large patch and you don't want to take up too much space. So you can just do an inset feed, but that's the effect of W. The small bandwidth makes patch antennas very useful for GPS applications or narrow, other narrow bandwidth uh, applications. Here's the fields that are giving rise to the radiation. As such, the peak direction of radiation is going to be up, and the polarization is going to be right in line with the E field, which is in this direction.